14 years ago, a hurricane hit the Grand Strand, and it's still benefiting the American Red Cross to this day. Find out what it's all about, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Agape Senior Assisted Living in Garden City, a little north of Inlet Square Mall. We're focused on the upcoming Hurricane Golf Classic to be held Saturday, August 2nd. And we're visiting with Charlie Thrash, the founder of the tournament, to benefit the coastal South Carolina chapter of the American Red Cross. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. Thanks so much for coming in. It's my pleasure. Next it's, Saturday, getting close, August 2nd. It certainly is. We're always get excited about this time, and we have a wonderful uh, venue to hold our event on this year, yes. and we're looking forward to having another great uh, a Saturday afternoon with the Hurricane Classic. Caledonia, what a tremendous course. Actually, John Springs was with us on Monday promoting a tournament this weekend at True Blue the sister course down there in Pauley's Island, but uh, to benefit the Coastal, uh, the Coastal Samaritan Center. But, of course, the Coastal South Carolina chapter of the American Red Cross has turned to Caledonia this year. And uh, Have you been playing there in the past? Well, this is the second time we've been at Caledonia. Uh, last year we were at True Blue, right. and this year returning to Caledonia. And uh, everyone has a wonderful experience uh, when they play golf or just visit. Uh, probably one of the most gorgeous golf courses in the world. And, uh, built on some old plantation property right down there on the marsh. and yeah. uh, It's hard not to have a wonderful time and a wonderful experience right. when you play golf at Caledonia Golf Club. Charlie, if a viewer didn't hear that, you said one of the most beautiful courses in the world. Yes, sir. Wow, that's a bold statement. Well, th they go to great extremes uh, to make sure their course is landscaped in great condition all the time, and it's just a wonderful piece of property. Uh, right. Mike Stranders, who was the architect for that course, uh, had a wonderful setting uh, to put together a very imaginative golf course, and it's just a great place to go play golf. Just mm -hmm. a great place to visit. Yes, yes, yes. Do you get to golf a lot, Charlie? Uh, I never get to play enough. Good <laughs> but, answer. Uh, but I try to get out about once a week. Uh, uh, as part of my duties out at the university, right. uh, I'm also the general manager at Quail Creek Golf Club. And, okay. And so. Obviously, uh, if you're going to run someplace, you ought to go play it every now and then. Just yes. to go out there, as I say, do do a do a site survey occasionally to make right. sure everything looks right. So that's my excuse to get out on the golf course. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned that the Coastal Carolina University has a tremendous uh, professional golf management uh, program, and you are the manager of program. You are the director there. I'm the director there. I've been there for a little over six years now. And, Is that and, right? Uh, we, uh, we really, uh, the, the professional golf management program is really a dual track initiative. Uh, our students are full-time students in the Wall College of Business, going through the entire academic curriculum as any other student, uh, getting a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration right. from the university. And while they're doing that, they will also complete all the requirements to become a card-carrying, dues-paying member of the PGA of America when they Great. graduate. How so, exciting. Uh, it's a, an exciting program. We track a great uh, group of young people. Mm -hmm. I believe Ori Georgetown Tech has a similar program. Ori Georgetown Tech runs a turf grass management okay, program. Okay, forgive me, yes. Uh, I think now actually the title of, of their department is Sports Turf. Okay. And they have a, a wonderful golf course superintendent. Right. Uh, there we go. And Forgive me, that's program. what I'm thinking about. But both of them tie into Quail Creek. Oh, yes, sir. And we uh, work together very closely with the staff at Ori Tech. Uh, for example, our students have to take a, a food and beverage course. We use our culinary school, right. Tech, to right. teach that. Good. They have to take some golf course uh, turf grass management courses, and we right. also offer them a, a basic golf course design class. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use the expertise and the faculty at Ori Tech. Uh, to provide those courses to our students. And then, of course, we all have access in a partnership way to Quail Creek, and so it's a pretty neat operation. Uh, uh, probably, uh, I don't like the word unique so much, right. but I would say probably in the United States, it's, a, it's a, the most cooperative between two such programs that you'll right. find. That is tremendous, Charlie. That's probably something a lot of folks may not know about. 
that there is that kind of a great symbiotic relationship right out in Conway, benefiting both uh, tremendous schools and, of course, uh, this great industry that serves the Grand Strand to such a wonderful degree. Well, it's fun to be a part of. Yes, yes, I bet it is. And you also mentioned, albeit that I know it's not tied into the tournament, but you've been active with Myrtle Beach Golf Holiday. Uh, yes, as you mentioned earlier, I was the general manager up at Bay Tree Golf Plantation for a number of years. And uh, during that, I was uh, fortunate to spend several uh, terms uh, on the board of directors of Myrtle Beach Golf Holiday, another uh, great organization that promotes our community. Right. You also sound a little bit like, uh, what's the name of the guy? Mickey McCamish, don't you? Uh, well, um, you ever been <laughs> accused of answering the phone and someone I, saying, Mickey? I, no, I tell you, I, I would be thrilled, though. I'm a great Mickey McCamish fan. He yes. was a, a great part of our community for a number of years, and, and uh, he, uh, he helped put Myrtle Beach on the map. Yes, and, yes. But uh, Bill Golden, who's taken his place, well, great job. Uh, will do a fantastic job also. So oh, we're yeah. very fortunate to have some wonderful leadership in that organization. Absolutely, Charlie. What, what an exciting time. And, of course, this being the 14th annual Hurricane Golf Classic, and to think about all the dollars that have been raised to benefit the Coastal South Carolina chapter, the American Red Cross, and Ori, Georgetown, and Williamsburg mm -hmm. counties. Three very large counties. Having a tournament right down in there in the heart of the three counties is wonderful. It, it, uh, it certainly is. The Springs family uh, it has been very generous to us in, in providing that venue to let us come out. And you're exactly right. We used to hold the tournament kind of up on the north end. Actually, when I was at Bay Tree, we used Bay Tree as, right. as a great place to host it. But at, when the three chapters merge into a three-county area now, right. uh, kind of down in the, the South Strand area became a perfect place for sure. us to, to do that. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're looking at raising somewhere around $25,000. Fantastic. Uh, and we're going to spend every penny of it right here in our own community. And Absolutely. So, uh, we we kind of named it at the start Hurricane Classic because uh, the benefits from the tournament all go toward uh, really helping fund to pay for any disaster type related activities within our area. Great. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, yes, please. Uh, we hadn't had one of those big type of disasters uh, in you know. a long time, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, we have little disasters all the, all the time around us, and for example, one of the, the charters of the Red Cross in the local areas is to respond to fires, home oh, fires, yeah. and actually that's our biggest challenge in this area. We've already had uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 fire-related incidents uh, that have displaced over 700 people. Uh, just this year. Since the first of the year. Since, since the first of the year. Boy, that must be uh, well over even where they were la last it, year, which it, was uh, a banner it, year for fires. Yes, hate to say it that way. but. And we've already uh, spent uh, a little over $125,000 of our, our funds, and that's hmm. all money that we have to raise internally here locally right. uh, to support those people. And, hmm. and not only do we support the individuals and try to help them get back on their feet, but also we're there uh, shoulder by shoulder with the with the fire crews and responders and the right. emergency responders, so uh, it, it's quite a task sometimes. Mm, Charlie, yeah. and uh, and this three county area, uh, I don't think most people realize the amount of area that is. That's over three thousand square miles that uh, is in our responding well, area now. Ori is, of course, the largest it's county in the state. Right. I think Georgetown's the fourth largest. Williamsburg may be the third or fifth. I mean, the, you've got three of the top five largest counties in the state that, uh, that make up the Coastal yeah. South Carolina chapter of the American exactly. Red Cross, a board which you have served on, I believe. Share with viewers what prompted you to originally join the board and what year that was, Charlie. Well, it, uh, I, I uh, spent a uh, career in the Air Force, right. and, and I, re I retired in 1995. And when I retired, an old Air Force buddy of mine, still a great friend, Rick McDowell, was the executive director of, the, at that time, the Horry County chapter okay. of the American Red Cross. Right. And uh, Rick decided I didn't have enough to do and, <laughs> and asked me if I would uh, put on a golf tournament. Uh, as a fundraiser for the Red Cross. So that's kind of how it started. Right. Uh, brought me in on the board and uh, been a member of the board. Uh, we have term limits, so sometime you go on and come back off, but we've right. continued the uh, golf tournament throughout that time, and it's been a, a great relationship. Uh, yeah. You can't think of a, I still can't think of a better organization to support than the right. American Red Cross.
Well, I recently saw a full-page ad with a bunch of heroes, heroes for the Coastal South Carolina chapter, and a lot of folks that are really stepping up to the plate, but there's still great needs. There's still a lot of needs, even if folks are getting $1,000 out of their pocket or more, or even, or even less. Every dollar will make an impact for the Coastal South Carolina chapter. It, it certainly will, and uh, this is, uh, as, as we all know, this is a very rapidly growing area that we right. live in. Right. Uh, that makes it exciting. Right. That also means that we all have to step up to the plate a little bit more uh, to support especially charitable, uh, uh, self-generating, yeah. self right. if, if you want to say, in our local community, mm -hmm. and to provide that support. A lot of people need it, and uh, we're proud to say that the Red Cross is there. It's, it's, uh, I guess if one thing I look at it, if something happens, we're expected to be there. Yes, absolutely. Those vans and that sign right there on your chest will be apparent. They will be out there along with the uh, fire and police sure. professionals here in the area. No, there, there, there are other activities that we also support that, that people kind of know about, but they don't think about it until you remind them. Uh, we do lots of life-saving training. We'll, we'll train somewhere in the neighborhood of 14,000 to 15,000 people a year. Annually? Uh, yes, sir, and everything mm. from uh, CPR to life-saving skills to water safety. Right. Uh, so we spend a lot of time out in the local community at schools. Uh, we have programs that start in the elementary schools uh, and then we all do a lot of on-site training for companies for their employees. And I then, didn't know that. And then we do our own uh, training at our facility on uh, the former Air Force Base. Right, of course, on Pampas Drive there. Speaking of that, if a viewer needs to get off to work now, Charlie, or get family out of the house, what's the best phone number for someone to call and is is there a website that they could possibly get information about the golf tournament or even sign up online? Uh, the website is coastalscarc.org. Okay, coastalscarc.org. Yes. Great. And and you can go on that website, matter of fact, and download an application for the golf tournament. Tremendous. For, for, for either a sponsorship or if you want to play as a group or an individual. Okay. And the phone number is 477-0020. Tremendous. 843-477-0020. And, of course, again, all the dollars will be kept right here in Ori, Georgetown, and Williamsburg counties. Be re reinvested back for hurricane prevention as well as anything that comes over that. $25,000 amount, I'm sure you'll plow back into fire and it, it any all, numbers of other areas that need dollars. It's uh, That's my charter to keep right. it local. Right, right. Listen to that. <laughs> and you've been doing that for a long time, Charlie. Now, Myrtle Beach is not, uh, uh, I, I believe I saw in your tour of duties in 26 years with the U.S. Air Force, three separate stops here in Myrtle Beach. We were a very fortunate military family. Uh, yes. They uh, first came here in 1979 spent a couple of years and then we spent a hardship tour in Hawaii, uh, came back to Myrtle Beach again in the mid 80s and we're right. here for uh, about five years. Uh, Air Force sent me off to a senior service school and then back again for the third time in the early 90s. And so, Is that right? The base just closed in 93. Were you a colonel when it... Uh... Uh, I, I, when I came back the last time I, I returned as a vice wing commander and, and unfortunately it was my job to set up the initial base closure process. Is that, that right? That was that was a sad, uh, a sad occasion, really. But uh, no, we are a very fortunate military family. Uh, right. as a matter of fact, uh, my children uh, graduated from high school with the same crowd they started the first grade. Is and, that right? And, and able to come back and forth, and and they actually both. Uh, decided to stay here locally and go to school at Coastal to get their college degree. That's so tremendous. Was, uh, we we kind of. I don't know if we adopted Myrtle Beach or Myrtle Beach adopted us. Right, but, uh, right. The vice wing commander. So just share with viewers if they, if they, I'm sure a lot of folks want to know how the air base was was set up there. There's a wing commander, and then was there one vice wing commander and there's the wing a commander, base commander. Yes. Wing commander uh, owns the whole thing. He's the guy that's responsible. The vice wing commander, commander's his deputy, right. as you might say. And then there are three primary functional organizations on, on, a, on an Air Force base anyway. We had the operations section, right. we had the support section, 
and then we had a logistics section, okay. and then we had some other ancillary duties such was as... Was there a base commander also? Or is yes, it, uh, the base commander uh, was really commanded and was over the support functions. Okay. If you want to kind of say it, he was over the buildings, the civil engineers worked for right. him, security police, communications, right. personnel, HR. And, and, and then uh, the base commander was uh, in in responsibility was level with our deputy commander for operations who is right. responsible for all the flying operations around the base and then we would have a commander for the logistical functions. How exciting Charlie. Well I'm sure it's a, I, I think about it because I recently drove through Hickory Circle, this circle there on the Air Force Base and there's a wing commander's house which is a little bigger than the other two or three houses on each side of exactly. it and I suspect that was even we, the, we uh, lived on Hickory Circle, last tour of duty here, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. It's but, a, but at the same time, very sad. Uh, yeah. Myrtle Beach was a great place to be stationed. We had uh, uh, a great organization here and great support from the community. Right. Uh, and I kind of had a standard little talk I gave incoming officers and airmen also that uh, if they were not happy, let me know. There was about 100 people lined up at the first, at the front <laughs> gate ready to take their place. To so, get in. It's, so it's, it was a great place to be stationed. Well, you mentioned hardship in Hawaii. Uh, I can't uh, even imagine <laughs> using that word associated with Hawaii. Uh, but obviously, uh, that was a facetious comment yeah, that yeah, I yeah, made. Yeah. We yeah. had uh, a wonderful experience uh, stationed right. in, uh, in the Pacific at the headquarters of the Pacific Air Forces uh, on the island of Oahu. Right, and we were there right. for about four years. And, and, uh, uh, not a bad beach also. No, I'm sure, not at all. Of course, our real focus is the Hurricane Classic, and we want to go through the steps there. If sure. folks haven't played before uh, in the last 13 years, this being the 14th annual, if they haven't played before, what are they going to find when they get out there? Are there some special, even, our, uh, even though it's getting very close next Saturday, are there still, mm -hmm. could folks sign up for the different sponsorship levels? They, There's they still some benefits. They, they certainly can. As, as, uh, uh, as I said earlier, we're in there to raise money. Right. And so... Uh, we welcome anyone that wants to come out, especially for sponsorship. We have right. several levels of yes. sponsorship. Right. Uh, uh, look, we always, uh, probably the most popular level is a, is a playing sponsorship for right. $500. Okay. Uh, they can sponsor a whole, we give them a whole sponsorship, and they bring a foursome in the play. Okay, great. Uh, regular whole sponsorship is only $150. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll take as many of those as we can get. We'll line the fairways with the whole sponsorship signs that people would like to bring them. Tremendous, okay. And, and we have several people that come in at the $1,000 level also. Right. Uh, and and uh, Carolina Trust Federal Credit Union is gracious enough to put up $2,500 this Is year. that right? So that I'll, is tremendous. I'll put in a little plug for the credit union. Uh, we love it, <laughs> absolutely. Which used to be the Myrtle Beach Air Force Base uh, Federal, credit, uh, federal union. credit Union. Exactly. So it has a, a great tie to the community in many ways, and it has expanded and now serves, I believe, even South Florence County, much of our viewing area. We're actually, the, the credit union is uh, now considered, uh, uh, it, it's, a it's kind of a, a community chartered right. credit union, and we actually have five branches now. That's uh, tremendous. We have branches in Johnsonville and in right. Lake City, of course, right. in Conway, a couple here in Myrtle Beach. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. Jerry and the crew are doing a wonderful job there, working very hard, and I'm sure I have a Still a lot to do, and whatever environment we're working under, there's still a lot to do with the credit we're, union. We're very fortunate. Jerry yeah. Miller, that you mentioned, yes. our CEO, does a wonderful job. And, yes. Uh, we have about 53 great employees and about a little over 20,000 members. So. Wow. Congratulations, Charlie. That's wonderful. I know you've had a long association with Carolina yes. Trust as well. When, the, when folks get out there, 2.30 is the shotgun start. Yes. Would you want viewers to come out earlier than that if they, they could sign up? Uh, registration starts at 1. Okay. Uh, McAllister's is providing food Great. for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Piggly Wiggly is uh, a major contributor bringing drinks and other snacks into us also. And so people can come on out and get a bite to eat, have a, have a nice lunch, uh, enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, and then at 2.30, we'll have our shotgun start. Okay, great. We, uh, uh, we try to do a couple things in this tournament uh, besides uh, uh, provide a great venue for people to go out and play, as we talked earlier about Caledonia. Uh, we also try to get them around the golf course a little bit sooner. And uh, we're kind of known for getting people uh, 
in and out, and we don't have six-hour rounds. And we, Is we, that right? We, we play right along. <laughs> I played in a seven-hour tournament a couple weekends ago, which was a very long day out. Not a person left without a tan, that's for sure. Well, that's, that's exactly right. But we've, uh, we do a couple things. For example, uh, you can't make worse than a par on a hole. Right. So uh, if you hadn't made birdie, you don't have to grind over that 10-footer to make par, pick it up, and go to the next hole. That's a great idea, Charlie. What prompted that? Well, actually, I wish I could say that was my idea, but I heard about it recently in another event in another location outside of Myrtle Beach. Yeah. And I thought about that for a minute, and I said, you know, that is a great way to kind of move people along. Because mm -hmm. one of the complaints you always get, especially if you got a full field at a captain's choice type right. event, right. that people complain about slow play. And mm -hmm. it is going to be a nice... Uh, uh, warm afternoon, most likely, yeah. on the 2nd, next yes, Saturday. Yes, August 2nd, yes. And so uh, we try to make sure that people come out, have a good time, but we don't torture them in the process. Right. This is captain's choice. This would be a captain's okay. choice. Okay, so that's very is. important for viewers who may not be familiar with that. That means that what exactly? Everybody's going to hit their tee ball. Right. You're going to choose the one they want to, usually the best one right. <laughs> out there. And then... Uh, then everybody's going to hit from that spot. That's wonderful. Until until they've holed out or made their par. There's then, probably folks who are still uh, finding out about that for the first time or playing in a tournament for the first time. Uh, there's always got to be a first place to start. It certainly is, and it and that makes a fun event for everyone because you don't feel bad if you hit a bad shot. Right. You can always right. blame it on the other three people in your crowd. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I could think uh, it. So it, you all hit bad shots. And, yeah. and it's, it's a great uh, social format right. for the people because it levels the field out and, yes. and everybody gets to contribute. Are there still some prizes? You'll still have a winner that day. Oh, yes. Well, that, uh, well, well, we have a variety of prizes that that are everything from uh, gift certificates will be out of, from out of the Caledonia Golf Shop. Right. Uh, to some uh, trip prizes, mm -hmm. uh, and then we always have a raffle. Uh, we have some great volunteers in the Red Cross that work hard to create some raffle packages for people, and uh, so it's it's my goal is just about for everyone to get their money back in right. in golf, food, uh, opportunity for raffle prizes, prizes that go out there closest to the hole, long right. drive, and all of those that just about everybody's going to leave with something. That is tremendous, Charlie. That is tremendous. Well, I'm sure you're expecting a great turnout, but a lot of viewers want to know, can I still sign up? It's so close. I know there's some sponsorship yeah. opportunities and obviously great benefits that go along with that over the next 10 days. But we, we, is there still room? There, there certainly is. We great. still have some openings for people. Okay. And uh, keep calling. If we fill up, we'll tell you. Do I have to have a foursome? Can no, I come no. out by myself? Can I bring a friend? Can two of us just show up? Or you certainly can. Okay, so you like slip to us know in. you're coming. Right, right. But uh, we always have a variety of individuals that just might be visiting the area. Right, and uh, they want to get out and play make a, a donation golf course, and at the same time, make a contribution. Know that their that their green fees go into a worthy cause that right. day. Right, and uh, we'll we'll match them up. Four seven seven zero zero two zero. Is there anyone they'd want to ask for if they called in, or is everyone in the red office ready Everybody to take in the Red Cross to fill office it out? Is ready. Okay, great. Of course, there's also you mentioned online. Folks can go to coastalscarc.org and print print out a the uh, laying out a foursome, yes. or even if it's just one person, you can fill out your info and fax it in. Exactly, and do that on, not only for playing but also for sponsorship opportunity. Excellent. Excellent, Charlie. As you think back over the last 14 years, what's been the most exciting aspect for you in kicking off the tournament? And just share with viewers uh, the best part of it for you. I, I guess it's, uh, for one thing, it's, it's uh, from a personal standpoint, it's a way of kind of giving back to the community. Right. Uh, uh, we all, I think we all feel good about ourselves if we're able to make a contribution. Also, uh, it's always uh, heartwarming. We have a variety, usually about 10 to 15 of our Red Cross volunteers show up uh, on, a, on an annual basis. They enjoy coming out and, and helping out and, and, and working with the people and interacting with the people. Uh, and then, obviously, when you see our community, I, I had a goal when I started this is that, that one day we had earned enough money over the tournaments to equal the Red Cross budget for a year. And, and back in the mid-90s, right. that was a, a modest amount. Right. 
I'll never get there. We'll never get there with this tournament unless you're going to write us a check for half a million dollars to, wow. uh, to is, do that because wow. of the, uh, as our area has grown, our commitment, the Red Cross's commitment has gone. Uh, so that's why you see uh, such campaigns that you mentioned earlier, the Heroes Campaign, uh, that uh, is, is also a major fundraiser for sure. us. And so sure. we're, we continue to uh, always uh, solicit funds in some ways and, and as a board member really that's our it comes to be almost our primary job is to continue to raise funds so that our great staff can do the work that's required well i can't guarantee you a half million dollar check but please count on the herald getting to force them in there and thank you again for coming in charlie it's sorry we've run out of time good absolutely stay tuned a little more with charlie thrash in the upcoming hurricane golf classic coming up next Two guests in one week calling Caledonia one of the greatest golf courses, not only in the area, but in the world. In the world, did you hear it? You have the opportunity to get out there and at the same time make a donation to a place that the donation is really needed. The coastal South Carolina chapter, the Amer American Red Cross, making a difference in Ori, Georgetown, and Williamsburg counties. You heard Charlie talk about it. 14 years, the Hurricane Golf Classics coming up quick, Saturday, August 2nd. Shotgun start at 2.30, registration's at 1 down at Caledonia. You can pick up the phone, 843-477-0020, or go online to coastalscarc.org, print out the application. You can send in your name or your entire foursome or two or three foursomes. They may still have room, but give them a call and check. There's also some great sponsorship opportunities available. Be a part of it. Get out there. Make a difference with the coastal South Carolina chapter of the American Red Cross. Charlie Thrasher is. Thanks so much for being with Thank us this you. morning. It's my pleasure. Yeah.